All right, y'all, I already finished my measuring, but I figured I'd go ahead and show y'all how I get it set up to measure the oil clearances. So I got my two to three inch uh, micrometer and got it unlocked. And all I'm gonna do here is find my tightest measurement, or my biggest measurement, rather. Now when finding it, or tighten this up to adjust it, you want to feel just a little bit of resistance, but you don't want to bind, you don't want to have to force it. So that right there is just a little bit of resistance, kind of sticky. And I take this across several parts of the crank here, or this journal, just to make sure it's not tighter anywhere else. Alright, and then I'm going to lock that in. Got a little lever here to lock it in. I'm going to check it one more time since I've locked it in just to make sure all I have is just a little bit of resistance. Alright. Now, to set up the dial bore gauge, move this back out of the way a little bit. Uh, vice would be ideal, but for now I'm just going to be using this clamp to hold my uh, micrometer in place. Now I've got my insert here for, I believe this is 2 inch. I inserted it so that uh, it's got about half the travel. Now I'm going to zero it in here. Let me loosen up the uh, dial clamp. And I'm just going to wiggle this. I don't know if y'all can see. Let me bring y'all around here a little bit. I'm probably going to be bumping y'all while I'm doing this. but uh, I'm going to try and find the smallest spot here on the gauge. And I'm going to put the zero on that. Now, when this sweeps, right smaller, left is larger. And so I'm looking for the point the needle moves furthest that way. And I'm going to turn the dial to put the zero on that spot and I'm going to lock it down. And then we'll have it zeroed. Sorry for the shaking. I'm going to reach through the tripod here. <laughs> and I'm a little bit persnickety about this because the more accurate I get this, the more accurate my measurements are going to be. And with something this fine, you want to be as accurate as you can. Alright, just going to rock it a little bit. Turn my dial a little bit more. Looks like that's got it right there. That's as small as I can get to read. So I'm going to take and lock that in. So that is now my zero. I'm going to double check it now that I've locked it down. Just to make sure I didn't bump it or move it. And see if I can't just repeat that measurement. Repeatability is key here. Yep. Right back there on the zero. Now, when I was... When I set this, I did it on the uh, the first journal, the crank. So I'm going to get you all set to where you can see, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to measure our oil clearance, and it's going to show our oil clearance. So let me get you all set up over there. All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and tip this in here. Now, because of the groove in the middle, I'm actually going to measure the inside and the outside clearance and take the smaller of the two. Again, we're looking for the smallest number we can get here. It looks like we're on this outside rib here. We're a little bit between the zero and the first tick. 
the inside one here we come all the way on down to zero actually a little bit lower that ain't good of course I didn't do this as meticulously as I did before when I did my actual measurement and yeah all right so each mark on this dial is a half a thousandth. I think that's what that is. And this side here, it shows the entire range of the sweep. I don't much care about that for this purpose, just that one. So I just count the marks and multiply by that. And uh, we're add them all together, should I say. And that'll give us a clearance. Now, let me show you what I came up with from actual measurements. So, when I measured this one initially, that was my total oil clearance. And there's for second journal. Third journal was only one tick. Fourth and fifth were the same. So, these two journal here, journals here are on the tight side. I'm actually uh, not going to do my clearances to the factory service manual spec, which I have here. I'm actually going to do this to a specific turbo spec I'm going to follow. So I go inside and figure out uh, how much I need to adjust these clearances to get to where I want it. And then I'll order some replacement bearings so that I can replace the ones I need to to get them uh, into the tolerance I need. All right. That's going to be it for tonight. All right, y'all. It's the next night. I looked up last night and I couldn't get undersized bearings. So, I have to polish in order to get to my oil clearance. Only got to remove a, about a thousandth off of this number three journal, according to my measurements last night. I only had a half thousandth of oil clearance, and I want to be right there where number two is at uh, uh, one and a half thousandths. So, been basically going through and uh, using the shoelace method to polish this, these journals. Still working on number three, the worst of them. I started off with some 600 grit, wet dry paper, with a little bit of a PB blaster, you can use WD-40. And we're currently uh, on 1500. Uh, we did 1000 grit in between, once I got real close. And if I had 2000, it'd be ideal to finish off 2000, but I ain't. I'm sure you can see by the string motion there how this works but uh, it's basically just a, a bunch of this and measuring in between and until you get the clearances right but uh, I'm going to get this done this is the first journal we've done so far and it's almost finished and then I got to go through and do another half thousandths on five four and one Number two, like I said, it's fine. We'll lightly go over it with some uh, 1500 just to give it a little bit of a shine and remove any crud and stuff from my measuring. And then all of my main clearances should be good. And I'll take the girdle back off, clean the crank back up, put a little, little bit of uh, lightweight oil here on the, the crank and journals and torque it back down. We'll see if it turns properly. It should take about 20 foot pounds of torque to rotate the crank or less and if it takes any more now we're still tight or we're not in line and straight or something's still off and i'll have to do some more checking but um this should get it i'm actually not using the factory service manual spec although this number two would still fall in the, the range for the factory specs but it's on the very top of that range um, the range i'm going for is uh for the mains uh, which uh, I'll be meeting the bottom of the spec for my my target here but uh, the factory targets here from the service manual is a uh, 0008 to 0019 so my specs here are a little bit uh, larger with a 0015 to 002 
So I'm going to be targeting that 0015. Anyhow, just figured I'd stop in and show you all how we getting this fitted here. Just getting these all polished up. This is not a fast process. Mm -mm. But it's better to take off a little too little, measure, and then do it all over again than take off too much because you can't put it back on. And then you got to swap out oversized bearings and grind and all that stuff I don't want to do. So we're just creeping up on it. So I'll be back with you when we get it all done. I'm ready to put the crank in. All right, y'all. Finally got all the journals polished. Took them all the way to uh, point, uh, 0018 for the most part. I had one a little over, one a little over uh, under, but they're all, you know, pretty close. Just uh, hand threading these studs uh, back down in there before putting the girdle on. Just got done setting the crank in there. You can see it's nice and shiny, well polished. I think it's going to fit perfectly, but uh, won't know till I get the uh, girdle back on here and get it torqued down if uh, we got good clearance or not. But just wanted to show you the, the you know, the polish on them. I uh, didn't put it in dry. Um, I'll show you here on the girdle. I actually put a little bit of uh, Lucas uh, engine stop leak on the bearings. And uh, that's because it's kind of thick like honey. And it's just going to stick there real good. It ain't going to run out. So it's going to simulate, you know, a little bit of oil pressure. But so far, it's, you know, it moves. I'm only rocking a little bit. I don't want to do too much without the uh, mains on here. But uh, so far, it's smooth and smooth. So let me put you all up. We'll get the uh, girl torque back on here. And I'll bring you back. And we'll see how it turned out. Or if I got more polishing to do all right y'all got the crank all torqued down and uh well it turns nice and easy one finger on that wrench i don't even need the the ratchet on there to i can just turn it with my hand but it is just silky smooth there's no tight spots anywhere it just turns nice and easy it does take some force to turn it but it just doesn't get tight anywhere. Should I mean, let me take that off of there. I can just rotate around by hand. I mean, that's that's smoother than uh, a lot of the cranks and engines I've uh, torn down and put back together before just refreshing them. That is nice. It just no restriction at all. No friction buttery smooth now I'm gonna be having to take this crank back out again cuz uh, well I still got to do the rod journals to fit the uh, bearings here on these and it's gonna be the same process I don't know if I'll record it or not I may but it's uh, gonna be a whole lot more of a uh, measuring and polishing with the uh, shoestring or whatever you want to call it to get the uh, clearances just right and then, of course, I got left. I got to fit the uh, file the piston rings and get them put in there, mounted to the rods, and uh, we'll have a bottom end together. I'm sorry, I just can't help myself. I'll just keep here playing with it, rotating it around. That's going to be nice. Now, something I did notice about this crank is it does have a ridge here. For where the rear main seal goes and it's not supposed to have a ridge there so as much as it pains me as deep as that ridge is while I have the crank out doing the uh, the rod bearings I'm probably gonna do the uh, shoelace polish here on this to grind this down to get past that ridge there so the new oil uh, rear main seal won't leak and get torn up by that that's something people often neglect but you don't want that little ridge there the new seal just keep getting caught in it uh, one other thing I noticed I have no end play noticeable I can't bop it forward or backwards or nothing to get it move in any direction it's just beautifully fit so I'm happy 
those uh, gauges much much better than a plastic gauge much better results more repeatable more accurate that is the way to go it was my first time using the gauges i had to learn how to read them how to measure with them um, i do wish i would have gotten a longer dial bore gauge because getting this journal and this journal <laughs> i couldn't really wiggle the gauge a whole lot because the uh, dial was actually sitting um, either in this uh, journal or this journal um, and of course you can't get at it from the back with it on the stand here because the stand blocks from going into the back side but um, that's only the only drawback I came came across uh, it's not a big deal um, I could have taken this off the stand and just set it on the on the deck uh, the head and just measured from this end but I didn't feel like doing that so I worked around that problem by uh, using the caliper and setting up for my clearance excuse me yeah micrometer uh, the inside micrometer I set it to the clearance and then I just kept measuring it on the shafts until it uh, cleared to get my clearance on these last two set correctly but uh, yeah So, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Um, I'll bring y'all back for the next step.